Hi there, so I'm going to do a series of four video lessons just explaining some very simple groove techniques and in each of these videos we're going to focus on one specific technique and just try to find different areas of the instrument to play it on just so we can create these kind of simple grooves, come up with our own lines very easily and then also we're going to look at some solo concepts as well using kind of a groove as our basis. So there's going to be a document for you to download and some tracks for you to download. It's very important that you do download your document for this lesson because it's going to cover a lot of things that we don't cover in this video. This is just kind of an outline just to show you kind of what's up and an example of what what's up. And the document's going to be like a full lesson structure. So please click on the link on the video and it'll take you right to the area where you can download the tracks and the play along document. All right, so in lesson number one, we're going to be looking at the major pentatonic scale. Well, actually, the basis of all of these lessons is to learn how the different ideas of uh, jamming over a, a dominant seven chord. You know, this is kind of the most common chord to play if you're in like a jam situation or you're playing a blues. It just seems to be the, the, the one chord that basically unites the, the music community. Everyone, everyone can play it, everyone can jam with it. So I just wanted to kind of focus on that just to show you some different ideas in different colours and different ways of playing these grooves. And like I said in lesson four, we'll get into some solo ideas. But for this lesson number one, we're going to look at the major pentatonic and how it works against the dominant seven chord. We're also going to be looking at all the different positions on the neck, starting from your lowest position on your lowest string all the way up to your highest position so we're going to learn all of these vertical fingering patterns which is really useful for when you want to start kind of adding um, fills and licks to your phrases or progressions or when you get into the soloing you're going to be able to move around the instrument without really having to think about where you are you know and as bass players this is kind of our biggest problem is we always tend to play in vertical patterns and then when we get to the highest string we just endlessly fish around the instrument just trying to play notes that fit over the chord. Well if you learn these vertical patterns properly and memorize them you'll find that all of the instrument will really open up to you so you're never going to have that um, hindrance of kind of wondering where you are or what's the next note you can play. You're just going to learn these shapes and you'll start instinctively going to them and then you'll start finding music within whatever you're playing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you one example first. Well, I'll play the, the pentatonic scale for you first and show you the pattern for that. And then we're going to get into a specific groove. And then we're going to start looking at these different positions. So here's a C dominant chord. And if I play just a C major pentatonic over that, you'll hear that it fits really well. fingering pattern for that is, or the most common fingering pattern for that is we can start on the third fret of the A string for that C, so the fingering pattern will be 2-4, third fret to fifth fret, and then on the D string in that position I want you to go 1-4, one, uh, one, and then on the G string in that position 1-4 again. So C, um, A string, second finger, fourth finger, so 2-4, string 1-4, G string 1-4, and same descending. Okay, so all I want you to do for now is just learn that pattern. The scale degrees are 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, and then root. So it's 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, root. Okay, here's exercise number one. So I'm going to use a metronome here on beats two and four. I'll play the pattern for you. I'll quickly break down what I'm doing and then we'll kind of move on to these different vertical patterns. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's really important as well when you're using a metronome to just try to lock in and, and find a groove in it. So I like to use things with the metronome on beats two and four, three, four, and I can really kind of feel that as a backbeat, you know, and it helps me get into the groove a little bit. So all of these little details help you have a better feel. So it's just good to be mindful. So if you look at the document, you'll see the line written out. It looks a little bit complicated, more complicated than it is. So don't be scared by these tied notes 
or 16th notes. There's a fingering pattern written in there for you too, so you can follow along. But basically, I just want to quickly talk about how I would count a piece of music like this, because a lot of funk grooves sometimes are written out and sometimes you have to read them. So um, a good way to break this down is just uh, beat by beat. So beat one, we have two eighth notes, and every time I see an eighth note, I count it as one and two and three and four. And when I see a sixteenth note within a beat, I always count it one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So if you look at the first beat here, there's two eighth notes, one and. Then it ties over until the last sixteenth note of beat two. So I'm going to count beat one and two like this, one and one, two, three, four. Okay, beat three. We, it's tied over again to the second sixteenth note, and then there's a note on the last sixteenth note. So it's basically uh, a half, um, an eighth note followed by a sixteenth note. So here's the first three beats. Follow along with the the chart. One and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then the last beat, it's tied over to the second sixteenth note, and it's just basically this run down. Okay, so one and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you can really kind of slow it down to the tempo that works for you. You don't have to have the pressure of a metronome or a drum machine or a drummer. You can really kind of break this down beat by beat, feel it within your own kind of inner pulse. And then once, you, once you're comfortable, then you can start adding the metronome and start adding feel to it. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly go through what these notes are. So again, so it starts on the root. The next note I'm playing is the sixth, then the five, then the root. And then I'm just doing this rundown from the six. So it's six, five, three. All major pentatonic, all in that one position. So what I'm going to do now is just play that along with the drum track just for a couple of seconds and I'm just going to start adding different ideas just to give you a, an idea of how to find your own bass lines. You know, you don't have to stick to this one, it's any concept will do, but just try to find a groove within that one position. So just mix up the order of the notes, you know, just find your own way, find your own pattern. It doesn't have to be at a fast tempo, it can be whatever tempo you like. If you have a drum machine, just experiment with different grooves, different styles. Just this pentatonic scale works for so many different genres. And just in my, like I said, in that one position, you can get a lot of mileage out of it. But now let's expand that idea and start learning these vertical patterns. And then we can start adding fills and variations and all that other stuff just using the, the uh, major pentatonic scale. Okay, so I'm just going to set the groove away and I'm going to start playing exercise two. I'm not going to break it down, break out the... Um, scale degrees, it's all major pentatonic, so again, download the document, follow along, uh, read the instructions, you'll see exactly what I'm doing, there's a fingering pattern. I'm just going to play, I'm going to start with this pattern, and then I'm going to start to just move around, finding different ideas, and once I've done that, we're going to get into those vertical fingering patterns, so you can start creating your own grooves. Okay, so here's the vertical patterns. So what the, the idea is, is to just basically start from 
each degree of the pe major pentatonic scale in C. You can do this for all keys, but we're going to demonstrate this in the key of C. So you just basically start on the lowest string, so my lowest note in the C major pentatonic will be an E. So what I want to do now is play in that one position. I'm not going to go past the one finger per fret, so everything I do is going to be four fingers over four frets, no stretches, no exceptions, whatever. We're just going to stick to this discipline and really learn it and really internalize these different patterns. I'm going to make some drones available for you to download so you can kind of play along with a, a related dominant seven chord. And this really kind of helps you to spot any mistakes you might make. It also training your ears to hear how these different degrees sound against the chord, which is kind of what we want to do is kind of have complete mastery so then we can cr create the music that we're hearing. So the first position is starting on this E. So it's open string, zero, three, A string, zero, three, D string, zero, two, and then G string, zero, two. That's the same ascending and descending. So zero, three, E string, A string, zero, three, D string, zero, two, G string, zero, A. Okay, next is starting from the G. Okay, so we're starting with our uh, third finger, third fret. So that's three, four, uh, two, four, sorry, finger and pattern. And then A string in position, two, four, D string, one, four, G string, one, four. Same descending. And when you play these different positions, if you're having a drone kind of playing along, you can just kind of play along with it as well, you know? And that's another um, concept I want to talk about after this, is just basically starting uh, grooves from different degrees of the pentatonic scale, because you can make it work. Whatever degree you start on, you can make work. Okay, the next position, starting on this A. Also the relative minor but we're going to get into the minor pentatonic in lesson two all right so one four e string a string one three d string one three g string one three again play around with it you get some nice little um run ideas you know because some of these finger and patterns just work really well over C7 chord. Okay, so that's that minor pentatonic vibe. All right, so, you know, everything that you practice, this is something that is very important to me as well. Whenever you practice, you've really got to try to make music out of it, or there's no point really studying it. You know, I got sick and tired of buying these instructional books that were full of information, but nothing I could really make organic into my playing so I could create my own voice. So when you're practicing scales and when you're practicing chords and all this stuff, just immediately try to apply it, you know? And that's gonna that's what's gonna become your voice and vocabulary. You don't have, really have to study or transcribe too much, you know? You can kind of create your own universe. Okay, so next we're starting from the C. That's on the eighth fret. Finger and pattern, E string, two, four. A string one four, D string one four, and then G string one three. Again, play around with it. Okay, next we're starting from the D. E string, this is 10th fret, 2 4, A string 2 4, D string 2 4, and then G string 1 4. Okay, we're entering into a higher register now, so this is stuff's good for fills. Okay, next we're starting on the 12th fret on the E. This is the last one I'm going to show you because then the pattern repeats itself. So from the E string, from the 12th fret, one four, A string one four, D string one three, G string one three. Okay, so have fun with that. Learn them in all keys. 
I'm going to make these drones available for you. Keep mentioning, download the document. It's important for you. Now let's quickly look at starting from different degrees and then I'll see you in lesson number two. Okay, so I'm now going to start demonstrating starting from different degrees. I'm just going to play a groove starting from every degree of the pentatonic scale. It's going to be random. I'm going to do it along with the drum machine. And just on the screen will appear the degree that I'm building the scale off. But I want you to use your ears and just kind of recognize what's going on while it's going on. And like I said, you can be very authoritative starting from other degrees than the root. Now this is a pattern that we you know, it's important to, to play from the root. You don't want to get too playful, but if you want to make your lines interesting or in a B section or whatever, then that's going to be kind of the place for you to do this stuff. And one more thing before I forget is the strong beat, weak beat concept. We're going to get into this more in lesson two. And um, basically it's, there are strong pulses and weak pulses within music. You know, the one, the bar one being the strongest bar, and then bar four, if we're thinking of a four bar cycle, the weakest bar. So a lot of the times you're gonna hear bass fills and drum fills at the end of a four, four bar cycle. And you can even break this down further into one bar, so your beat one is strong, beat two is weak, beat three is strong, and then you can start manipulating chord tones within these strong beat and weak beats, so you can create tension, and then you can go down even further into eighth notes, sixteenth notes, and then this is really how you can develop your soloing, because you're always targeting those kind of stronger beats and adding tension to the weaker beats. Now this is a really important concept for a bass player, because whoever's playing with us, or whatever music we're playing, the band has to feel and hear that harmony, you know? So we've really got to spell out that chord. We don't have to go from the root, but we have to spell out that chord one way or another and be authoritative in it. So everyone else is clear and comfortable doing whatever they're doing. Okay, so here's a series of grooves starting from different degrees using the major pentatonic. <laughs> 